Hey everyone, Hero here and thanks for all tuning by for today's video, which will be covering one of the best stasis hunter builds for all endgame activities, including Grandmaster. With this build, you'll be able to shut down combatants with infinite ability spam and super fast regeneration for both your melee and stasis grenades, and also create wells which can come in handy in many ways. On top of that, you'll be able to proc your heavy and special ammo thanks to the Aeon Gauntlets being used, which will allow your team to tear through champions and bosses with no threat of running out of ammo too quickly. Now, when people say hunters suck for endgame content, you want to show them that this build as it is, as it will carry your team hard through any content that you desire, but also you can freely customize this set for the ever-changing seasons and still retain the superiority that it provides. You're getting constant damage, free ammo, infinite abilities, even if you're not a hunter main, you gotta admit that this is a pretty sweet build, am I right? Of course I am, so before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. To start with the subclass, we will be using the Revenant, as this is one of the best subclasses to use if you want to lock down large groups of combatants via your super or ability spam. If you wish to gain back quick abilities and be able to stun champions back to back while gaining large benefits doing so, you will need to follow what is commonly shown on screen. You will need to have dust filled grenades as they have the fastest cooldown provided and are the best with trapping combatants in one spot. From here, you then want to have both the Touch of Winter and Grim Harvest aspect as you want to collect as many status shards as possible for both personal defense and faster melee regeneration. Next, you want to have Whisper of Durance for increased slow and freezer time on combatants, Whisper of Torment for gaining back grenade energy while being damaged, Whisper of Rending for increased kinetic damage against frozen combatants, Whispers of Conduction for making status shards track to you when nearby. And then lastly, you then want to have Whisper of Rhyme, which will grant you an overshield upon shards collected. What you get now is a build designed around ensnaring combatants with your grenades, and from here you can then get an extra 42.5% kinetic damage on targets, create shards that will grant you melee energy, and also grant you an overshield from doing this. Now, that's not all of it though. Next, you want to aim your melee and discipline stat to around 100 or if not as close as you can get it, as these two stats will be used a lot and no other ability based exotics will be used here to enhance the speed of which your abilities will be coming back. Everything is natural baby. Next, you want to have the fire and ice mod so that every time you kill a champion, you get both a solar and stasis world to drop. Elemental shards mod so that every time you collect a shard, it counts as a well, which is a big buff for the amount of shards you can produce. Invigoration, so you can get that extra bit of melee juice from collecting orbs of power. And lastly, you want Resonance Siphon for where every time you or your team stuns a champion, you'll get some stasis ability back for doing so. If you've been keeping up, then you should know how this goes, but for short, each time we stun a champion in any way or form, we get energy back. And using our Dust Rose Grenades, we can lock down the champion and keep them there while getting the ability energy back. As the duration of our grenades are quite long, we can use the energy provided to use our melee and create more shards for our own welfare, and generally repeat as many times as we like until we get sick with the champion and then finish them, which our gauntlets, which are exotic, will kick in and produce heavy ammo for our team and we can end our story on a happy ending. Basically, anyone that touches our dusk field, or should I say our death orb, and gets inflicted will have a very painful death which you can do from infinity and beyond. But it doesn't always have to be doom and gloom, we can always end them peacefully via our weapons, which I would recommend you pick as well. Arbalist is a great anti-everything weapon that can take out elemental shields in one go or be used to debuff a major combatant and one-shot them from his lethal position hit. I highly recommend you equip this for the build as it's very effective at covering all angles and content you play in, which is very similar to how the build plays out. Secondary wise, we have the Point of the Stag Bow, which is an art precision frame bow that covers multiple perks for you to pick and choose freely, which allows a number of customization for the user in end game. But also because it comes with Vorpal, which is still a very powerful perk to have for any weapon in game, no matter which slot you have it in. This one key perk will allow you to take out mini bosses to bosses with ease, and because it has a high crit multiplier, Using this against a stunned champion means you'll be taking off a lot more health compared to a version without the perk. Now remember, with our freeze build we can stun a champion for a long time by simply using an overload mod on them. 
With the damage being covered, you could easily take on a Grandmaster Champion on your own, which should say a lot to be honest. Now, for the heavy, we have Reed's Regret with Quick Draw and Vorpal, and once again, a highly effective weapon to use this season because of how common and popular the Parkour Deconstruction mod has become. Although this mod will most likely be going next season, the weapon still has a place and function thanks to the many buffs that Bungie has provided for the weapon class. Once the next season comes, we can see what is new and popular to use instead of the fallen weapon and then adapt from there. For your stats, both the discipline and strength stat will be the two key areas for building up enough ability energy to proc the many buffs you will be relying on. As we will be using stasis, elemental wells and the subclass itself, we just need to fill in the blank areas and have the main stats as high as possible and then just build from there. As mentioned earlier, having both your melee and discipline stat at 90 to 100 is going to be the best option you want to aim for if you want to have relatively fast regeneration on top of the other mods you'll be relying on. Shards can be created easily via your shurikens or grenades, and from this you can collect them to further build your abilities and never run out unless in dire straits. You also have the Resonant Siphon mod which is going to grant you back a hefty amount of ability energy every time you stun a champion. Now by constantly freezing a combatant and then stunning them with your weapon or thermoclastic strike mod, you can proc this mod multiple times which then becomes ridiculous as there doesn't seem to be a cooldown tied down to this. As you'll see, this is very handy when you're trapped in a small room with teammates and surrounded by all types of combatants as you can slow the area down with your abilities alone and then be blessed with your work. One thing to note, elemental shards do have a cooldown tied to them so do be sure to watch out how often you collect your shards. In terms of super, we have R space at 40 as this stat isn't going to be highly focused on as both melee and discipline is. However, considering how strong this super is in general, it does make sense to have a few mods around to speed this process up. Having the hands on mod is a big plus for how often you'll be using your melee and how fast it will regenerate from there. I would also add in the power preservation mod so that you can create more orbs for your allies which is always helpful. Left over wise, we then have the exotic Aeon Swift ability, Sect of Insight, which will grant my team special and heavy ammo if I take out an elite and champions via finishers, which will really help out once you hit the boss room of a high end grandmaster. Next we have protective light for the extra layer of defense once we hit critical health. Radiant Light for providing me an extra plus 20 in strength, a fusion scavenger for more fusion ammo of course, and then Taking Charge which will activate all charge with light mods that require it. This can be changed out to the Elemental Charge mod instead thanks to the Elemental Charge mod so do give that a try. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play out within the build. For Head we have Discipline, Hands On, Power Preservation and Fire and Ice mod. Arm we have Discipline and Elemental Shards mod. In chest we have Strength, Concussive Dampener, Sniper Resist and Protective Light mod. Leg we have Strength, Innovation, Effusion Scavenger and Radiant Light mod. Cloak we have Minor Discipline, Resonant Siphon and Thermoclastic Strike and Taking Charge mod. Alright, so there you have it. An extremely powerful Hunter build that will carry you in any content you are in and will cover whatever challenges you will come across. Now I do understand that quite a few of the mods shown are from the artifact itself and will most likely be taken out come Witch Queen, but even if that does become the case you should still be able to use the build how it is and you just need to opt in the missing pieces and just go from there. Now let's take Fire and Ice, although it mainly works off of champions, the ability to get multiple worlds at once are handy for when you need a rapid cooldown. You could easily swap that out for a melee wallmaker mod instead since your strength stat will be recovering ever so slightly than normal. You could then add in the Well of Restoration mod times 2 or 3 for even faster ability energy cooldown with collective wells, and then slap on the restore of the finisher mod and then just call it a day. Or you can mix things up and get a weapon that creates explosions and use the Powerful Well mod and Explosive Wellmaker mod to create solar wells alongside just stasis ones. The fact of the matter here is that even when the key mods created in the build are gone, you're still going to have the options available to swap in and use other things for the time being. That's just one example as to how I'm going to adapt my build come next season, but at the moment the following build is one of the three key endgame builds that you want to have while running Master Vogue or Raid or Grandmaster etc. 
the cooldowns are great, the ability stun effects are great, and in general it will be a hard miss to sleep on this build when you know exactly what it offers. Try out guys, it will 100% get you picked for LFGs, and if not, you get your money back. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter if you want more general Destiny news and builds from there. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.